ChatterRatCoach.com. Why is there so much surge during this case? Let's take a careful look at everything, even that phago tubing. We have a very experienced surgeon, so routine case, normal dilation, good rectus, everything's normal here, watch what happens. We've left the audio on so you can hear what the phago machine does. Whoa, what is that surge? Well, look, at, look carefully, look how after the piece gets aspirated down, there's a tremendous amount of surge. He knows something's wrong. He comes out of the eye, tries again. Maybe something is not set up appropriately. And then aspirating, aspirating, aspirating. And there you go. Okay, but there's a lot of surge every piece. This is very concerning because you can easily nail the posterior capsule. Surgeon Smart here putting extra viscoelastic. There's an air bubble coming in, so trying to chop the pieces. Again, the pieces aspirate okay. Then there's a tremendous amount of post-occlusion surge. Why is that? Well, we have to think, how does this work? Well, to avoid surge, you need to have a sufficient amount of inflow to match the outflow. So if you have outflow that suddenly surges, let's say you have tubing that's not rigid enough, that could be an issue. What if you have not enough infusion going in the eye? So you have a normal amount of aspiration of outflow fluid, but the inflow fluid is limited. That could be an issue. Sometimes you can see a kinked line or bent infusion line, and that's not allowing you to go inside. Sometimes the residents are doing a long case and you run out of BSS and the bottle's empty. That could be an issue. But that's not the case here. So again, this part looks okay. There is some flow. Now it's easier now and less surge with the IA. Why? Because what's the aspiration of the IA? Much less, look at the tiny aspirating port. So in the irrigation aspiration cortex removal, there's much less surge. Faco with a bigger bore, hollow bore needle and a bigger opening, that is more of an issue. So the issue here is probably going to be the fluidic imbalance, so not enough inflow. The end of the case here looks pretty good. You see they use the IA probe to wet the cornea, put the viscoelastic in, lens is going to be delivered. That's all, again, fine and dandy. So what do you think is going on here? Come on, you're a smart doctor. If you're doing this case and you have all that surge, what is happening? Something's happening. There's some posterior pressure maybe? Nah, probably not it. Again, normal eye, let's say 20 diopter lens. Let's see at the end here, taking out viscoelastic. Is there more surge? And mm, looks okay. Well, the answer is, of course, it's fluidic imbalance. And in this case, the surgeon is experienced enough to say, wait a minute. Let me just check out exactly what's happening. So the case is finished. Case will be fine. Patient a beautiful outcome. Surgeon is able to recover from the surge issue quite nicely. But the important step is investigate. Why did that happen? Because you don't want every case to be like that for the rest of your operating day, do you? No, of course not. It's too high risk, too stressful to the surgeon. It's going to take a week off your life. So let's go at the end of the case here. He'll seal this up and let me show you the tubing. So here we go on the FACO machine. There we go. Here's the infusion tubing. And the way the technician set it up, look, the infusion tubing is kinked there. So instead of being routed appropriately, it was limiting the infusion going in the eye as that was placed on the machine. So the, this tubing should go in that cutout, therefore protecting the tube and preventing it from being collapsed or kinked or partially occluded. So by placing the machine tubing in the incorrect position, the inflow was severely limited. So doing FACO, where you have a lot of outflow, there's a lot of surge. So now the surgeon's gonna fix it and the rest of the cases will be normal. Woo, tough case. Glad you enjoyed this investigation. Thanks for watching.